All right, hey, hello guys. Got another video for you on some hunting information uh, coming from Hawaii. If you follow anything that I do, you know that one of the things that I was very involved in was trying to establish game management in Hawaii and some of the hunting versus environmentalist type issues that we have here and um, sharing information with that. So hopefully, maybe collectively as a community, um, we can move things forward and get some progress with up until such time there isn't any but uh i was noticing you know one of the posts uh one of my friends on instagram had made uh ikaika from uh, a hue ranch is his uh, instagram handle and you should go follow him if you guys like to um get unhinged uh, commentary <laughs> from political issues or things like that he's a very uh, animated fellow and uh more animated than i am for sure and um, maybe more uh more outspoken about about these issues and then I probably ever will be but you know getting back to the hunting information and this is kind of what uh, I want to share and one of the things he touched on <clears throat> in one of his recent videos was the closing of the Lanai axis deer season and you know I had seen some posts uh, on the internet from uh, one of them was from gohunt.com on Facebook and the, the title was Hawaii cancels 2021 Lanai axis deer season and the other one was uh, from the Sportsman's Alliance on their Instagram page. And it says, Hawaii closes 2021 Lanai Axis Deer while beaches remain open. And, um, you know, if you don't know a whole lot about uh, the, I don't know, the, the situation of, of Hawaii public hunting, then you wouldn't, if you just read those headlines, um, it, you might get laced with a little bit of mixed information or notion with that. And I'm not in any way defending what our what our um, you know local DLNR is doing with the situation um, as it relates to uh, you know the current COVID stuff but what I'm going to share with you is some information that I think you should know so that you have the whole picture when you uh, look at these things and you know like anything on social media uh, general information the hell with the headlines definitely look at the source and make sure you know um, you know make sure they're credible one and then even if they are credible, I mean, say myself, for example, don't believe any of the BS I spit on here. Definitely go check it out and see if it's credible information for yourself if it really concerns you. And especially if you need to make a decision on these things, definitely, you know, go look at stuff for yourself and figure that out. Don't just trust the headline. And in this case, I think the headline might be slightly misleading. So getting back to it, yes, we, we do have a state uh, Lanai axis deer season. And uh, getting real specific about it, it's, it's held on about 30,000 acres on the island of Lanai. And if you don't know Lanai, most of Lanai is actually privately owned. <clears throat> if you know Larry Ellison, the uh, founder of Oracle or whatever, one of the top 10 richest guys in the world or whatever, uh, he bought Lanai and with it is all of that. And there's, he has a whole uh, <clears throat> company that manages the, the island, uh, Pulama Lanai of which about 30,000 acres the state has leased historically for a long time uh, from the landowner to hold a private hunting uh, program there. So, uh, not private, to hold a public hunting program there. So, yes, it's public hunting, the state holds it, but it's actually held on private land. So I think that's kind of a misnomer. Uh, people don't fully understand there. Um, yeah, public hunt, but on private land. And... Um, in this case, Lanai being very small and Molokai, uh, another island, is very similar to this. They had canceled the season due to the COVID issues. And you could say there's a lot of sentiment in Hawaii in general about getting any COVID cases at all. Uh, there's a good, now I'm not saying good or bad. Now I'm trying to be neutral here, but uh, there's a sentiment from a significant or enough amount of people that they don't want no cases at all or, or can't handle a little bit so we shut everything down kind of thing and you know we're still quite shut down now as it is but uh, um, they had shut the season down citing the concerns over COVID and you know uh, let me say the good the the uh, defense part of it perhaps the defense part of it would be that you know those two islands are very small islands they don't have uh, medical resources and staff and there is a decent elderly population on these islands of at risk of at risk folks so um, say you were to get a widespread issue there where a lot of the elderly 
uh, were to contract COVID as a result of a lot of influx of uh, tourists or even uh, neighbor island people moving around, there may not be the medical facilities to handle that kind of influx of, of, of cases. Good, bad, I, I don't know, I'm not a medical guy, but that's kind of the reality. So there's a little bit of waiting toward that. And there's another waiting, you know, just uh, culturally in Hawaii, and this is to our benefit and also to our detriment, is we tend to, um, when we talk and make decisions in Hawaii, we're very circular in, in our decision making and communication. And what that means is um, we don't particularly direct or tell people what to do in Hawaii. Very local style is to ask everybody around and then do it again and then do it again. Sometimes you don't even make a decision as a result of that. But what happens is it begins to um, heighten up a lot of issues that may not be uh, the majority, but they get taken into consideration quite significantly. And um, in this case, you know, not every not everybody is elderly or at risk. It might actually be a small number, but it's just it holds a lot of weight and that's, you know, culturally how people make decisions here. Now I can argue that <laughs> in other things they don't do that. In other things we get a lot of um people that move here and then they just wanna tell local people what to do and they they bring you in to communicate but then they still go linear and tell you what to do in the end and don't take into account anything you just said. They just go to hell with you and do whatever. So um but in this case, yeah, I would say there's high sensitivities around it. So I'm not defending it again. Uh just giving you the full um the full information there. The other thing I wanna share is the difference between private and public land hunting here and in the mainland, say you live in I use an example, Colorado, for example, right? A lot of people go elk hunting in Colorado, and you are a private uh, ranch owner or something like that. But you want to hunt elk on your ranch, you would still have to get the same tags from the, um, the DNR of Colorado and they hold a season and all of that. So in a sense, you know, the government or the public sector uh, controlling what the private sector does, you know, because the resources and all the animals across that state are held in the public trust. In Hawaii, it's a lot different. They basically don't have the same mindset. So all the animals that we hunt here, they belong to the land that they're sitting on. So uh, we might have an access deer season on uh, Lanai on a state area of 30,000 acres that they lease canceled. But everywhere else, you can still hunt access deer where they exist. Um, say sheep, for example, we might not have a, a sheep season somewhere here uh, on the islands, but if you got a ranch somewhere else that has tons of sheep on it, you can hunt them, eradicate them, you can kill them all if you want, you can do whatever. Uh, there, we don't have this kind of rule where uh, migrating animals belong to the public trust uh, with respect to game species. Birds uh, and bird hunting, we, we kind of do, uh, so that's a little bit different when we're talking about mammals here. So understand that, that um, when they say that they close down the season, they just close that area on that hunt for that island, which means they're what basically they just were trying to discourage people from flying into the island. That's the main reason, discourage the travel and the movement of uh, hypothetically the movement of COVID with it. But it's not shutting down access deer hunting for the whole state. If you're on Maui, you got a ranch, you got, you know, the residents of Lanai right now, they can still hunt. Molokai, they, they're still hunting and killing deer every day and eating deer and living off of it every single day so um, you know that might have been a little bit misinformed and some of the the headline there might have been a uh, little striking I had a few friends from the mainland and stuff ask oh you know what the hell is uh, Hawaii doing and this and that and taking food off of people's table and whatever um, you could construe it that way but um, this incident is really small it doesn't affect the uh, the whole area um, specifically just that rule uh, some other things are just kind of expanding on that. Um, you know, if you follow every, anything else I do, you know that there's a huge environmentalism component and almost an anti-hunting component. Like there's, you know, we're heavy with the Sierra Club, the Nature Conservancies, the very more preservationist type uh, lobby of the world, so to speak. Um, I'm not saying it's good or bad. There's some, some good stuff that comes with it and there's some bad stuff that comes with it like anything. 
but you know if you're a public land hunter here you like the public hunting system here i do feel that these lobbies these very environmentalist lobbies um, will reduce hunting over time in the near future um, and we'll see reduced uh, opportunities and reduced areas and we already have that now uh, if i do some math on just my own history probably about 70 percent of the land mass that i used to hunt as a kid i has it either been eradicated, taken out of hunting, or scheduled for eradication, and all these kinds of things. And um, there's not a single place that I hunt that I don't think, that I hunt public hunting, that I don't think um, will be eradicated someday. And this includes Lanai, um, that deer hunt, even though it has such a huge economic engine for the island and stimulus for that island. I don't put it past them that uh, environmental group come in and say, hey, we got to fence all this and eradicate it all to um, save whatever plants or save the reef or save the ocean or save the climate change. I don't know. You pick something. Um, it's very extreme environmental uh, view here. And, you know, if you guys, the folks that live on Lanai, you guys know there's a, there's a pretty big project out there to get federal funding to get that done. I'm not for or against it. All I'm saying is just know that these trajectories of things, they have a pattern. And, and the pattern is, is, Things move more environmentalist, and pretty soon it's not just about hunting. It's not just about the animals or, or plants or even economics. It's it's everything that you do affects the environment. So you need to pay a fee and put money in to the environmentalism cause, and that's where it's beginning to. That's where it will begin to affect every part of your life. So just be aware of these things, and um, you know, vote or look at things accordingly that way. Um, I can get more into detail, more specific about some of this stuff, you know, politically in another way. But this video, I just wanted to keep it about Lanai. And, um, you know, it, it's a hard time right now. Hawaii's continu continually to stay shut down. I just heard that the airlines are a major airline. Hawaiian Airlines is not flying to Lanai and Molokai now just because of the the financial uh, impacts of, uh, of COVID. And uh, this is super concerning, you know. Like I said... This very circular uh, thing where um, it seems that we're, uh, as a state, maybe unable to press forward a little bit, find the path forward to uh, restart the economy, save these jobs, and save the infrastructure, not infrastructure, but the services that provide a lot of other things uh, that, that communities rely on. So um, if we don't move forward, but be so fearful of just having one case or two cases, and not being able to more actively mitigate those things and look at it um, and weigh the, the ba uh, weigh the balance, cost-benefit balance, um, and not just money balance, but what I'm saying is cost-benefit to the overall economy, not just dollars, but I'm saying people's jobs and being able to start that back up again when you're ready. These things don't just come back like that. You don't snap your fingers and poof, you know, you're, you're back in business. There's thousands of jobs being lost, and it's really sad. I, I think there's probably a lot of people out of work, even on the nine Molokai, so... Um, gotta get that, gotta get that tourism back up. <laughs> it's it's crazy, I know, but uh, I, I I'm fearful for the for the economy. I'm fearful for the even for the hunt continuing. Um, like I said, our local D DLNR, they're they're quite environmentalist in their approach. So um, I wouldn't put it past them that uh, the high ups of our DLNR they would like to see the Lanai hunt extinguished eventually, disappear, no lease anymore. They've had lots of time to go and get stuff done to, to reattain that lease, and they haven't done it in, in years. Um, it's, it's really sad. They've drug their feet around. And, you know, I have examples of, of their leaders not wanting that hunt anymore. I think it's just um, they see it as one of the strongholds of public hunters here, and um, it's one of the better systems that we have that has a chance to progress into the future because of the economic benefit, because of so many other benefits, and not just looking at it environmentally. There are some, I think there are some haters of it. They want to see it disappear. And it'll kill the public hunting community as a result too. So very anti-hunting thing. But anyway, hopefully that's some information on Hawaii. Very, um, some different information that you're not going to get from somebody that really doesn't live here. So on somebody who lives here, hunts here all the time. Very concerned about the future. And um, hopefully you are too. So that's some information. Hopefully it's useful to you guys. And um, catch you guys in the next one. Aloha guys. Bye.